Hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands? How much would you spend on your pet? Some families are willing to do whatever it takes to keep their furry companion around longer. Our TV6 reporter Tanya Spencer has more on the trend and the technologies making it possible. Take a little bit of the calculus off his teeth today. This 95-pound Greater Swiss Mountain Dog is battling recurring bladder infections. A special harness helps hold him up, and his owner changes his diapers, ordered from Canada, every four to six hours after an injury paralyzed his back legs. Regina Mattis has already spent more than $5,000 on five-year-old McKinley, who's in physical therapy to try to get his muscle strength back. He is a neurologist, so that's where we go for his neurology visit. Hi. <laughs> he's done hydrotherapy, so he's been in a, it's, it's like a treadmill, but it's, he's submerged in water up to his chest, and he walks underwater, and he's done laser therapy, too. So, um, he's actually been in a, in an oxygen chamber as well. So we've done lots of things to try to get them better. There are people that will, they will take out a second mortgage if they feel it's truly helpful to their pet. Dr. Kerry Wassum has been a veterinarian for 24 years. He says specialized medicine for pets is common now. Everything from radiation for cancer to pet dental care. And humans are more and more willing to spend more to keep their pets healthy and around longer. We have four cats, two dogs and a hedgehog. <laughs> they get better health care than I do. <laughs> Mary Ann Mower has spent more than she wants to admit on her pets, especially on Coda, her 10-year-old English Mastiff. Gosh, my husband's going to kill me. <laughs> um, oh, goodness me. Oh, we're talking thousands. We're talking thousands. I mean, probably for Coda near on 10,000. And 12 year old Farley has had an ear surgery, arthritis and other ailments. As they get older, Mower says she visits the vet about once a month. Well, it's like having kids, you know, we take animals in and they're part of our family. So, you know, if they need something, they're going to get it. Good girls, aren't you? Hey, both Marianne and Regina know they can't buy their babies more time forever. They'll decide with their veterinarians when it's time to say goodbye. And so we have, in a sense, we have to do a lot of counseling because we don't want somebody to go into debt for a situation where we know their animal's only going to live one month longer. And so we end up not only being the doctors, but sometimes counseling on how far the medicine and surgery should go. And just like with human pain patients, Dr. Wassum encourages second opinions. And like in humans, they do more preventative care now to prevent major problems down the road. So, Tanya, what about pet insurance? Is that worth the money? It all depends. Dr. Wassum says that he does recommend pet insurance for certain high-risk breeds and also sporting breeds that hunt out in the field. But for your average household cat and dog, it usually doesn't pay off. But it's a gamble. One big surgery, you know, and it pays for itself, and so that will make it worth it. Some plans also have exclusions, though, that you need to know about for certain breeds. So you have to talk to your vet about the insurance that he or she might recommend. Now, Marianne, who you saw there in the yeah. story, she now has insurance on all of her pets. She says for her, it's paid off. Very Good interesting idea. story. Thank Thanks. you, Tanya.